This is Pat Soundbites Unplugged. Unplugged. The podcast where all the artists go to tell it as it is. Careers, music, tours, and more. And here's your host, the man that refuses to eat squid, Pat Calamari. Hey, Pat Calamari here, host of Pat Soundbites Unplugged podcast. Hopefully everyone is doing well. Today, episode number 115. We got a returning guest who I have been a fan of for years. Whether it's Thin Lizzy, whether it's The Almighty, whether it's Black Star Riders. His solo project is just as good. That's Ricky Warwick. And Ricky is uh, unleashing his fifth solo album, which officially comes out on February 19th via Nuclear Blast. And it's called When Life Was Hard and Fast. And uh, Ricky tapped into his close friends like a Joe Elliott of Def Leppard and Andy Taylor of Duran Duran and uh, Luke Morley of Thunder. And um, how he put this all together with his friend and producer Keith Nelson is uh, a great, great job. Well done putting uh, his friends in with these killer tracks. I mean, this album uh, is is hard rock at its best, and I don't mean like real crazy. I mean, you can hear everything. The lyrics are great, the melodies, the hooks, the guitar playing, you name it. And it's all radio-friendly, I'm telling you. It's going to be hard for me to pick out what songs to put on our rotation. I was in love with each one, and you get to hear me pretty much review each track. And uh, the tracks are great. Um, if you haven't been online already to see You Don't Love Me, and there's a video on that. And um, When Life Was Hard and Fast is out there. Um, I want to say even Fighting Heart is out there. Um, I'm not quite sure on that one. But anyway, this is a great album. He actually has a track here that he wrote uh, for his daughter, and she accompanies him um, on the track. And her name is Pepper. And uh, she seems to be into the uh, following dad's footsteps. But there's some really good songs. I mean, real wow songs like I Don't Feel at Home. And then he jumps into Still Alive. And the final track is called You're My Rock and Roll. And it's it's really, really cool. But all the tracks are fantastic. And I urge you all to buy it. And when you buy it, pre-order it. And when you get it, play it loud. You're really going to enjoy it. I said to him, I think this is certainly his best work ever. But that's just my opinion. I mean, these are all his babies. so. And, you know, there's no harder guy in the business. I mean, he's a rocker's rocker. I mean, that's what he wants to do. He's he's got his sleeves rolled up, and he's he's a musician, 24 hours, 7 days a week, 365 days a year, and good for him. And hard work is paying off, I can tell you that. I did have to shift gears and ask about the wonderful Black Star Writers. They came out in early summer, late May, with a single candidate for heartbreak, and he says they're all ready to rock and roll. So it's just a matter of time of uh, getting in the studio and recording, but the album is done. Uh, for the most part. So really cool stuff. Um, And I encourage you, if you're a fan of Ricky's like I am, go check him out on his Facebook page. I mean, he loves doing videos, keeping himself busy, and keeping himself um, relevant with his fans. So all good things. Gotta love it. Gotta love new music. And this album is a killer. Get it today when life was hard and fast. Okay, time to enjoy a little Ricky Warwick on Pat Soundbites Unplug. As always, live, love, and laugh a lot, because life is way too short. Enjoy. Hey, folks. How's it going? Ricky Warwick here from Black Star Riders, and you're listening to Pat Soundbites Unplugged podcast. WBXO Classic Rock redefined in conjunction with Pat Soundbites Unplugged. Great to have a good friend back on our rock and roll line. Boy, this guy never disappoints. He's an amazing singer, songwriter, and an incredible guitarist. I mean, we're talking the almighty, the thin Lizzie, the black star writer. We're talking the one and only Ricky Warwick. Ricky, what's going on, man? How you been? 
What's up, brother? How are you? I am doing well. I can't get the smile off my face. I have been rocking and rolling. Your latest release, which is coming out February 19th, When Life Was Hard and Fast, and it kicks ass. I, I can tell the listeners, pre-order it now and play it loud. <laughs> Amen. Amen to that. First of all, Ricky, before we get into the album, how are you making out? How are you doing? Your family? How are you, how are you handling this uh, whole COVID Thank headache? Thank you for asking, um, uh, we're all doing well. We're all safe. We've all been well. We're all able to sort of function from home. Kids are homeschooling. Wife's working from home. I'm doing what I can. And, you know, there's a roof overhead and food in the fridge. And we're, we're very, very blessed and very thankful for what we have. Excellent. Good to hear. Same thing here for me in New York. I've been, uh, it's good to hear. you know, just being careful. Everybody's going to work. Everybody's washing, doing the right thing. The numbers are crazy. Uh, man, I got to tell you, I am, I am freaking out to go to a live show. I think my last yeah. one was like uh, in February of last year. When was your, well, I know you just did one on uh your I don't feel at home lockdown sure, acoustic sure. show, but what was the last? Was that a live show or was that a live stream? Yeah, no, no, there are live streams. You know, there's no shows. Right. Shows, so okay. Go to just live online streams, which are yeah, not ideal, but as good as we're going to get right now. The actually last time I played a live show was in November of last year with Black Star Writers in with in Prague in the Czech Republic, and that was the last time I got on an airplane. To fly back to California. It was the last time I played a live show. Wow, man, is this this is crazy? Well, we can only pray, Ricky, that this vaccine and everybody uh, does the right thing, and we get you back on the road and uh, see you perform a lot of this great music, whether it's your own stuff or the uh, BSR. We're all looking forward to it. You put this. How? Well, let me start. When did you start working on this, and um, what was the recording process like? And uh, again, you tapped into some of your closest friends, of course, the great and wonderful Joe Elliott. Talk to me about how that all, uh, what made you say, uh, okay, time to roll up the sleeves and get going again. The sleeves are always rolled up, Pat. I never stop. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I, I, I'm I'm very blessed that you know my the, the my vocation in life is is to be a musician and it's a job that I love. I never take it for granted. So I, I write constantly and continuously. It's it's an ongoing process for me. But we started working on the demos for when life was hard and fast in 2018. Myself and Keith Nelson, who I yeah, co-wrote and co-produced the record with, uh, we entered the studio April of 2019. Recorded here in Los Angeles, uh, April 2019, and uh, yeah. So I've been sitting waiting to get this thing out to the people for almost two years. I've been doing my head in, but finally it's it's coming out. Uh, I'm so glad, and let me tell you, your fans are going to love it. I mean, if they got a taste of you. you Don't Love Me and the, the killer video, and I want to spend time, Ricky, if you don't mind just talking about some of these great tracks, since I'm blessed sure. to get a copy of it digitally from the uh, from your publicist and the label. Oh, my goodness. I mean, from song to song. You know what really impressed me, Ricky? It, you know, I know you're a hard rock and you get it through but it was so simplistic the melodies the lyrics were wonderful I'm a lyric guy I want to learn the story behind the song I could hear all the instruments and I love the flow of the songs in the record is that is that is that important to you I mean when you start out with when life was hard and fast which is a Great song. We'll talk about that in a minute. And then you finished up with You're My Rock and Roll, which is a great track to finish. Do you really spend time, do you think about the flow of the album? Yeah, very much so. I think we're, we're old school in that way, and that we still want to sequence it like a, like a record, like vinyl. So you have an A side and a B side. And, you know, the tendency these days, obviously, is to stick the first three singles as the first three tracks. And we, we consciously, myself and Keith, didn't want to do that. We wanted to, the whole thing needs to be listened to as an entity, and we wanted to sequence it like that. So we spent a lot of time working on a running order that we felt flowed and ebbed in the right places and kept everybody engaged the whole way through. And I'm really happy with how it turned out. 
I mean, I, I like I said, uh, I'm, I was thrilled. I, I've listened to it a, numerous times, and I get all excited and pumped up, and I got it cranked, and I go, man, this album, uh, I'm glad that you put it out. And I know it's got to suck in a way that you can't really promote it, but you've taken on the social media thing pretty well with uh, doing a lot of videos. I follow you on Facebook. I know you got another show coming up. Um, on February 20th, a Zoom session, um, which yeah, which is yeah. good. It keeps you relevant and gets uh, keeps you out there with the fans. Well, you I mean you have to do it? It's thank God for the internet. You know, it's that's really our only outlet right now, and uh, I, I've enjoyed it because I'm doing one a month. It keeps me focused. That you know, I treat it like any other real show. I'm rehearsing. I'm learning the songs for it. I get psyched up to do it. You know, you can in interact with everybody out there while you're while you're playing. You, they can you know, send in questions and comments while you're playing through the songs. It, you know, it's different. It's never going to replace a live concert but it's certainly a different um, aspect that we have in our arsenal now and uh, man I mean, I've been really enjoying it it's just kept me it's helped keep me sane during, during these this dark times, you know. Yeah, hey, you got to do what you got to do, and yeah, you might not hear the applause, but you read, you know, probably go back to all the comments, and pe people are going, "Wow, man, thank you for doing this, Ricky." What makes these tracks are really cool, and obviously, I love everything with Black Star Rider, and when uh, you and Scott get together. How do you separate? I mean, a lot of these songs could have been Black Star Rider songs. How, how do you separate that? I mean, man. Yeah, don't tell Scott. Corn. I won't tell. I won't tell him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I think it's really simple. As I said earlier, you know, I'm right. I'm writing all the time, and when I have an idea, I have an inkling that if it's going to suit Black Star Riders or myself, I just have an instinctual feeling what's going to work and with black star writers we have a certain sign and a certain style that we adhere to and what i think people expect from us plus i'm very aware that when i'm good i've got an idea what scott christian robbie and chad are going to bring to that idea they're going to make their mark on it and make it a black star writers thing so there's a certain lanes i think that we need to stay between when we're working on that stuff you know when you're doing the solo stuff all bets are off and then the road's wide open uh, and then you know narcissism comes into play and you're, you're the really only person you're pleasing is yourself so that makes it a, a bit more of a, a bit more of a free range to go a bit crazy with some ideas that may not necessarily work for black star writers you know um but the good thing about it is I think the guys in Black Star Riders trust me enough that they know I'm not selling them short I'm not turning up for a Black Star Riders album going like like guys I got no songs that I I used them all in my songs. <laughs> you know, that's, that's, that's never been the case. It's always I've always turned up armed with you know twenty, thirty songs for Black Star Riders that that I, I believe are quality songs. So I, I feel I'm not letting anybody down, and they trust me enough to, to to let me you know be in that position and get on with it. So I'm very blessed uh, to be able to do that. No. I, I know. I just know. I've definitely had to raise the eyebrow from Scott a couple of times when I, you know when I played him some some solo stuff, and he's gone, "Really? You know, you didn't give that one to us." <laughs> But it's it's only happened it's only happened a couple of times. So uh, yeah, you just tell, tell Scott lay down, dude. There's plenty more in the package, man. There's plenty exactly. more to come. Exactly. When, when you're writing the songs, when when you're when you come out with the lyrics and come out with the songs, you again, as I mentioned, tapped in with some of your closest friends, the wonderful Joe Elliott, Andy Taylor. I'm looking down this list, uh, Luke Morley and Thunder. Do you think of these guys and say, man, I got to pick up the phone? Maybe you know what they can bring to the songs and make it, yeah. I mean, more enhanced? Uh, you know, they, first and foremost are my friends, and, and then secondly they're amazing artists, and talented musicians and, and, and make music in bands that I've loved and still do love. So, uh, you know, I'm in contact with these guys, it's not like I haven't talked to these guys in months, you know, we, we, we all talk regularly and, you know, they hear I hey, am in the studio, I'm like, hey, you know, Joe, will you sing some backing vocals on this song for me? And, you know, Joe's been an amazing friend and, and supporter of mine for many years and, and he's only too happy to do so same with Andy Taylor you know it, it's really just organic you know they're just mates and hey will you play some guitar on this for me and uh, that's as simple as that that's great. And I'm sure they tap the same thing to you. Hey, would you help me out? And you're like, yeah, no doubt. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, when life was hard and fat, I'm a lyric guy, Ricky. So I try to really understand the message here. Is this about like, you know, trying to get to the top, following your dream type of deal? 
Pretty much. This is co-written with a buddy of mine called Sam Romanson. We're both Belfast boys. We grew up in Belfast in the 70s and 80s. Pre-internet, pre-cell phones. And it's just about our dreams and our life and our aspirations. You know, we get kicked out of the house when the sun came up. We played outside and we came back in again. And, you know, the rough and tumble of sort of playing in the streets back then. And, and, and uh, you know, it wasn't so much of a cotton wool world back then. And I think it was just our dreams about being soccer players or being a... Being, being a rock and roller and, and chasing those dreams and and, and, and looking back on that with, with a smile and, and, and a lot of fondness for those days gone by, but happy with how things turned out and where we're at now. Absolutely. Uh, you don't love me. I mean, well, it, that kind of says it right there. You know, you're uh, you're you're putting in all the effort for love, but you're not getting in in return is what I got out of it. Sort of, you know, it's really, it's really, it's really not a love song. It's really, you don't love me, I don't care. It's, it's a sentiment behind that. Okay. It's, it's really a pop of the naysayers and the people that like to mouth off on on the internet. You know, the the, the keyboard trolls and and people that like to say negative stuff. I've never really got my head around people that. If they don't like something, if I don't like something, I don't like it. But I wouldn't go on there and attack the person and go, "Hey, your music sucks," and you know, blah blah blah. And you know, I, I'm just. You know, why would I do that? Why would I waste that negative energy? But there's so many sad people that feel the need to do that because of their own insecurities. And it's, you know, it's me just saying, yeah, you knock yourself out, you know? Have at it. If that's all you've got to sort of get going on, going on in your life to attack somebody and, and, and be rude and be critical and be arrogant and hide behind a keyboard, you know, then really you got to look at yourself a bit harder in the mirror. Exactly. Two songs that really match up really well is I'd Rather Be Hit and then um, Never Corner a Rat. I mean, I felt terrible um, reading the, the press release about uh, an ex-U.S. Marine and how he yeah. felt the system in the country really let him down. And then I, yeah. I'd Rather Be Hit. You know, yeah. we, we're dealing with it today. We deal with it all the time. The government, the politicians all give us bullshit and, you know, it's all about them. So, uh, I thought that was yeah, pretty yeah, interesting. Yeah, you you know, threw them in there. Thank you. Just, just lies and more lies. It's really a, me a metaphor for that. What's the lesson of our two evils going on here? I mean, all we all we want is the truth, and we deserve the truth. And, and, and you know, um, uh, you know, it was obviously written. The song was written about two, three years ago. And you know, it's just, it's just saying, you know, it's, it's, it's. it's I can take the physical pain. It's the mind games that that a lot of people play and a lot of people in power play. And, um, you know, sadly, the general population are the ones that seem to suffer the most in any any of these situations, which to me is is wrong. There's a lot of hungry people. There's a lot of people hurting. There's a lot of people need to be taken care of. And, and I think uh, the governments all over the world feel, feel to do that on a daily basis. Good for you. Outstanding. And I totally agree with you. I guess the, the most personal song is you got a chance to... Sit down and uh, rock and roll with your daughter Pepper, and time does doesn't seem to matter. That's that's got to be a the top, the best feeling you could do. Proud dad moment, very much so. Um, you know, the song was written predominantly about her for her, and um, she's a great uh, she's a great little singer. And she was eleven when she sang on that, and uh, she's playing a bunch of instruments. She's playing violin and keyboards and guitar. Uh, and I sort of was like, hey, this song's about you. You need to you need to come in and sing on this. And uh, we had a good day in the studio. You know, Keith Nelson, who co just the record with me, has kids as well. And we had a good fun hanging out. And, and uh, she came in and she nailed it. She did it in two takes. And uh, it was a real proud dad moment for me to have her on there. That's great. She, you think she's following? She wants to follow dad's footsteps? I think she's better. I think she's better. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to have to uh, keep an eye on uh, Pepper Warwick. That would be pretty cool. You heard it here. Watch out for Pepper Warwick. Yeah. Uh, the song that really hit me, I Don't Feel at Home. Wow. What Thanks, What a song, dude. I mean, Thanks. that's that that song like wow and wait till the fans hear that thing that i mean you 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 put it right out there and uh wow yeah you know laying my soul bare on that i mean i love the vibe musically it's got a real southern stonesy bluesy vibe musically uh, and and lyrically it's a heavy subject but it's a subject that's close to my heart and one of my relatives is um He's struggling with addiction pretty much his whole uh, adult life, and, and 
you know, um, love the kid to death and just, just the hell that he's, he's, he's goes through and he's been going through and just can't seem to get off that wheel, you know, and, and it's heartbreaking. And it, it doesn't just affect the person that's, that's has the addiction problems. It obviously affects everybody that's connected to that person and, and, and loves it and loves them and, or her and dealing with it on a daily basis. So I just wrote it from that perspective of what, what I saw and the, and the sort of cry for help and the, and the pain that, in, they're in and, and, and just not trying, not, not being able to fit in in this world because not everybody can fit into this world, you know. Not right. everybody can deal with it. And um, it I, doesn't make you any any less of a human being. It's just that's just sometimes it's not easy. You know? I I got goosebumps, and every time I hear it, I get goosebumps, and I. Uh, reflect upon some family members and friends and we all have them and um uh you, you really uh you really hit it out of the park with that one then you go from that one to uh still alive man what great slide guitar man holy yeah, crap man. keith nelson he's a great slide guitar player you know and and there was no way that we weren't doing a song that I wasn't going to get Keith to play slide on because that's his forte. He's a great guitar player, but his slide playing is something else. And we, you know, when I brought in Still Alive, I was like, dude, you're, you're, you're playing slide on this. And, you know, that song, it, it, that's a little bit of one where you take a bit of a poetic license. It was, I, I love the movie, the movie Hell or High Water about the modern day bank robbers set in Texas, that whole outlaw outlaw thing when the guys are fundamentally good, good guys that have gone bad, but there's still some goodness left in the soul. And just taking that and running with that and expanding on the story a little bit and inventing the characters and uh, you know and, and just the excitement of, of sometimes doing the wrong thing even though you know it's the wrong thing um, but eventually as we all know the road runs out it doesn't last forever you know you, that's that's just the way it goes and I think that's the the sort of fun and the fun and, and the sadness behind that story as well that's a it's a great it's a great track and then you jump in the clown of misery which you did on your phone and I love the part where you started saying solo you know here's where yeah. the solo comes in that was pretty funny yeah, right. I mean kind of you know, uh, go ahead yeah sorry go ahead what you just say but no go go ahead go ahead Ricky yeah you know I I wrote the song as I do with everything I, you know it's, so I don't forget it I instantly sing it into the iPhone and. Um, I, I sent it over to Keith Nelson. I said, "Hey, we we got to cut this. This is a good song. You know, let's let's record this." And he's like, "It's done." And I was like, "What do you mean it's done?" You know, I said, "Bro, this is this is on my iPhone. How could it be done?" And he went, "Man, there's a desperation and, and, and a feeling about this that it's going to get ruined if we take it in the studio and start trying to put some gloss on it." He said, "Let's let's make it sound like an old Woody Guthrie, Hank Williams, '78." You know, nice. AM. Let's, let's affect it and let's, let's keep the desperation in what you delivered or not. So I make the joke, I always, I, I say it, it is, it's the cheapest song I've ever recorded. <laughs> No, it was a good. You know what? It was a great decision because it was a, it was a, like a change in pace. But it was a cool. It was fun. It was a cool. Some you know, not many people like you know. Well, let's do a demo. Here you go. But he was, you know, he was thinking. I, I, it fits right in with the flow of the album and, and everything. And then when you end it with you know the phone call to him and you're my rock and roll. I mean, yeah. you, you can't end it any better than that. I mean, yeah, yeah. it's just come full circle. Then you know we're just. It's me and Keith talking about what we love and what saved our souls is rock and roll. And, and um, you know, that whole sort of phone call thing is like rock and roll won't die. It may have lost this mystery because I think the internet's taken a lot of that out of it. Just everybody's accessible all the time. And you you can tell what your favorite rock star had for breakfast now, which, right. you know, I, I don't, I, I don't want to know. You know, I, I, I like the mysticism in rock and roll and I, I miss that. But it's just a celebration of of rock and roll has never let us down and, and, and why we love it and why it's ingrained in our DNA. Nah, great. It's a, just a terrific track to end it all. And, uh, Thanks. man, you hit it out of the park. You never disappoint. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm close to say it's probably your best work. I don't know if that's how you agree. I'm very proud of it. Very, very proud of it. I'm very proud of how it came out. I mean, I've been living with it a long time, almost two years, and um, I'm still listening to it on quite a regular basis which is rare because usually when you do your own stuff you listen you listen to it for a month after you, you finish it and, and sort of listen back and critique it and then you really don't listen to it again unless somebody puts it on or 
you just have one of those days where you go, I'll listen back to it. But, you know, I've, I've, I've still, I've, I've been listening to it a lot and um, I'm very proud of it. And it was a great experience working with Keith Nelson. Uh, I, guess the, I, I guess the hardest part is that I'm not a musician and I never recorded anything besides doing the radio and podcast stuff. But when you come up with a great song like you have written and, and all these are just terrific songs, there's a point where you and Keith, and, and he obviously is an accomplished and uh, producer. He's got a great ear and he, working with you, putting this all together. I guess there's a point where, and I don't want to curse too much, but you could fuck it up by going, d- digging into it so much, right? You got There's a point where you got to say, this is good. Stop, right? Yeah, you, you got to, re- the way I look at it, and you got to remember, for me anyway, and everybody's different, but for me, you're capturing a moment. That's what recording is. You're capturing a moment where your head and your mind and you're at at that moment in time when you write that song and then when you go to record it, that's your other, you know, that's your other little bit of time. And and, and you have to walk away from it. And because then you're not capturing the essence of what you've set out to write. You know, it's like a it's like it's usually the first two takes are always the best. Because there's something about the attitude and the feeling and the energy that you have when you're putting the music down for the first or, or second time that you don't recreate when in the 50th time you go in, you're not, you're not going to get the same energy or, 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 or same anxiety or same passion that you're going to get the first time you play it. And Keith and I are both were very aware of that. And we were very much, you know, like, we'll, we'll backtrack a little bit here. The, 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 the iPhone thing with Cloud of Misery, as a testimony to that, the song that Pepper sang all in time doesn't seem to matter. Everything, you know, the guitar and the, uh, I mean, I'll tell you a great story about that song, if I may. When I, when I, when I wrote the song and I brought it in, I went to record it, and um, we did the demo of it, and I had a really, really bad head cold that day. And Keith said to me, Let, let's do a demo of this song. I said, man, I don't really want to sing, and I'm not feeling too good, and I've got a terrible head cold. He said, look, don't matter. It's just a demo. Just, just you know, you know, just just go get through it, get something done, just as a reference point. So we put up a mic and I sat and I played it on the guitar and sang at the same time and did it in one take. And if you listen to it on the album, my voice cracks a couple of times in the vocal, but, but kind of in a nice way. So when we actually came to re-record it for the album, you know, we set up all the mics again and we go in, we can't recreate, you know, whatever the head cold was doing in my voice or whatever I was feeling that day. What we captured that day in the demo was magical. We couldn't re- recreate that again, so we, we just left it. We and then we added Pepper on the backing vocals and the strings, strings later. And yeah. That's to me was record the essence of recording. It's, it's capturing a moment. That's capturing. awesome. That's a great story. Yeah. And I and, and I, you know, you always hear. Did you did you do you have are, are you recording this? You know, and it's always sometimes yeah. a little late. But most people. Yeah. Most people in that control room are hitting the button, even if you just bullshit, you know, just that yeah. you don't know. Like you said, that one moment, you can't, you can't ever, ever bring it back. When you play, when you it's play. Mistakes, it's, mis- it's the mistakes that make, that make rock and roll what it is, you know. Yeah. When, when you strap on the guitar, Ricky, as a guitarist. And you, I think you covered it all here. You play with passion. You play with emotion. Do you think about the scales and stuff when you when you're doing a solo or anything? Oh, 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 oh. absolutely not. Never thought, about, <laughs> never thought about scales in my life. I could even play one if you'd ask me. <laughs> well, I have no interest in that, and, and not that's not to say that that's not important. It is. I just don't have the patience to sit down and learn that. Right. You know, the, the guitar is an extension of me. And it's an extension. So when I pick it up, I want to write a big fat riff. I don't care if it's you know, right. totally cor- correct that the chords are right. right. All I care about does it sound good. Right. It's, if it sounds good, then it doesn't matter what the hell you're playing. But, I, I certainly have my own distinctive way of playing guitar, and it's very me. And all the great guitar players have that. You know, it's you can you know you can say, well, I want to sound like James Hetfield from Metallica, and you go and you can buy all the same gear Hetfields. Never happened. It's never going to happen because you're not you're not James Hetfield. Right, exactly. And the reason I th- he, sounds, he, he sounds like James Hetfield is he's James Hetfield, you know, and and that's it. You got to sound like you. And I have a certain way of playing guitar that works for me and, and has worked for me for thirty years. I'm not interested in uh, the theory of it, right? And and that side of it. And that's not to say there's anything wrong with that at all because it's not. That's just it's just what works for me. Right. So I'm concerned about me. What's <laughs> working for me? 
Exactly. No, no, no. You, you, you're you hitting it right on the head. It was like when we, we sadly, when we lost Eddie Van Halen, you know, um, it doesn't matter whether you got a $300 guitar or a $5,000 Strat, you know, you're not going to come out with the actual what Eddie was doing. Just not even Leslie. Eddie, Eddie, even, Eddie could pick up any, anything and, and it would sound like Eddie Van Halen because of who he is and the way he plays. Right. Same, same thing as Leslie West. Somebody's saying, well, he had a guitar. He, he had a just pick up and this and that. I go, I, I have to disagree. I think it's his fingers. It's him. It's his fingers. It is. <laughs> And people can try all they want, but they might get close, but it'll never be perfect. I mentioned earlier, Ricky, uh, I don't feel at home. The lockdown acoustic show, it's sold out. Well, and how did it, I, I know you mentioned it before. You had a great time doing it. Yeah. Yeah, amazing. Really, really good. Um, that's the seventh one I've done since we went into lockdown here in California last March. And, uh, you know, I'll continue doing one a month till, till I'm able to get back out there. And then you got the one February 20th, uh, the Zoom session, and that, now that's yeah. for only the UK that's, residents only? That's a UK, it's, that's really like an online in store. Okay. It's through a, 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 you know, a record store called Banquet Records, and they, they really asked me to do, you know, I scheduled to do an in store physically, but obviously, so they put it online now, so sadly that's only available to UK. But I'm going to do a St. Patrick's Day. Um, online show in March. Which oh will be yeah, baby, so, yes. <laughs> yeah, which will be on, be on stage it again, and, and and anybody all over the world can access. Oh, I'm looking but, forward to that. I have to promote you. that. All right, we got to switch gears and talk about a little Black Star writer candidate for the Heartbreak came out early uh, this summer. You know, you got the traditional excellent vocals, uh, dual guitar. You guys just always find a way to uh, rock it. Are we uh, working on anything as the follow-up of the uh, Another we State are. of Grace? We are, it's, and it's done. It's demoed and written, and it's sitting there ready to be recorded. Oh, cool, cool. Excellent. Yeah. So, you know, it's just a question of, obviously, we all live all over the place, and, uh, you know, it's not safe for, for us all to be in a studio right now. So as soon as, I, I'm hoping, you know, summertime we can all get together in the studio and get in and record and record the thing, but it's, it's good. we're good to go. We're good. We're, we're all we're all done. We're just waiting to get in there. We can't wait to hear the rest of that. I look forward to uh, getting that out there and probably talking to you or Scott uh, to promote that as well. Where can we get the um, the pre-orders? We can go right to RickyWarwick.com or Nuclear Blast. Yeah. You know, RickyWarwick.com, all the Amazons, the, the iTunes, every everywhere. But RickyWarwick.com, there's a link if you click on it. You can uh, find out all the pre-order information. Obviously, the records come out on Nuclear Blast. Um, but on the uh, RickyWarwick.com, there's lots of there's lots of opportunities to get like signed vinyl and colored vinyl and T-shirt bundles and and all that good stuff, you know. And then you're on Facebook, Ricky Warwick official, Twitter, yes, uh, Instagram, and obviously the label Nuclear Blast. Uh, it's all out there. Man, Ricky, I, I tell you, I'm, I'm, I'm not BSing you. I love every track. It's going to be a real hard decision to uh, probably lay out five or six of the tracks and uh, get them on our rotation. I know your fans are going to love it. I mean, this thing should go through the roof. I really I really hope but, uh, that the fans to grab onto it and, and, and it takes off and puts you on the top of the chart because you, you, you deserve it. This, this one is uh, this one's a kick ass and take names i i, oh, I really enjoyed fun. it man i really do enjoy it i appreciate that brother thank you so much ricky i hope you enjoyed the conversation as much as i have buddy of course bro always do always do we gotta get you to new york when this thing clears out so we could really rock and roll hallelujah i will be there the one and only Ricky Warwick right here on WBXL. We are Classic Rock, and we are redefined in conjunction with Pat Soundbite's Unplugged Podcast. Yeah! All right.